Hello, Matthew Gavidia. Today in the MJ Slap Sciences Medical World News, the American Journal of Managed Care is pleased to welcome Dr. Margaret Moline, Executive Director and International Project Team Lead for AZI Inc. Can you just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your work? Uh, Margaret Moline, um, as introduced, uh, and as the International Project Team Lead for, for Lumbar Accent, I'm responsible for the Global Clinical Development Program, both for the insomnia indication that we'll be talking about today and for future work with Lumbar Accent. At this year's Sleep 2020 Virtual Conference, Phase 3 data from the Sunrise 2 trial on DayVigo will be presented. Can you discuss how the trial was conducted and what primary and secondary measures were analyzed? Sure. So the study that we're talking about is called Sunrise 2 or Study 303. It was a one-year study of patients, adult patients with insomnia who had difficulty falling asleep or staying asleep or both. So they, assuming that they met provisional criteria, they were, they were randomized to treatment with lumbarexin, one of two different doses of lumbarexin, or placebo. It was a 12-month study. The first six months had the placebo uh, group to compare the effect of lumbarexin to, to placebo. And then the second half of the study, all the subjects uh, were on active treatment. So the study provided two types of data. One, the longer-term data, because we were able to show lumbarexin worked for the, across the six months of placebo-controlled treatment. And then we also were studying people who started and stayed on lumbarexin for a whole year. So this provided us with long-term safety data, as well as showing persistence of effect in the second six months. And based on Sunrise 2 findings, can you discuss how DayVigo fared on long-term efficacy and safety for adults age 65 and older with insomnia disorder? Sure. So what we showed in the total patient population was that there was benefit on sleep onset and sleep maintenance uh, compared with placebo. So this meant that the subjects fell asleep faster. So the change in their baseline was bigger and statistically significant compared to placebo. And this is also what we saw in the older patient population. And as far as the, um, the side effects that we're seeing, they were very similar to the ones that we saw in the overall adult uh, patient population. With lumbarexant, the most common uh, adverse reaction is somnolence, sleepiness. Uh, uh, that was reported, whether it was a, uh, the adult patient population or the older patient population. There are a total of nine presentations at this year's Sleep 2020 virtual conference on Day Vigo. Can you speak on what these other presentations will discuss and any significant findings? Two posters that um, are looking at transitioning a patient from their current uh, Zolpidem treatment to Lembarexin. So we wanted to understand who might be interested, what, what characteristics of the patients would be who wanted to switch their uh, Zolpidem treatment to Lembarexin. So that's one poster. And the other, was one, the other poster related to that was uh, understanding whether people could successfully transition from Zolpidem to Lembarexin and we found that they could. So those are, we, we hope that those are helpful to prescribing clinicians who may have patients that um, are looking to switch for a variety of different reasons and to provide some preliminary guidance in case that's a good therapeutic option for his or her patient. Another poster that, that uh, I think is important is one where we analyze data from the, the patient global impression uh, of, of insomnia. So this is asking a patient to rate how well the treatment worked from their perspective. And on the questions like, did it help you fall asleep? Did you get more sleep? The patient answers that they had a positive effect or a neutral effect or a negative effect. And then we can look at how much change in their sleep onset time or their total sleep time corresponds to a rating of positive or neutral or negative. And this allows us to give a, to share the patient's view on what treatment means to them. And I think this is an important uh, set of data that can, can help a clinician understand the size of change that matters to a patient. So when determining whether a therapy works for the patient or not, 
they have kind of a benchmark. So that's another one of the posters that uh, we're, we're very happy to be presenting.